In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Peace be to you. In today's Gospel, Christ says this very simple, salutary phrase, not once, not twice, but three separate times. And we should pay close attention to this. Of course we should pay attention to all that Christ says, but I think when he says something three times in such close succession, we should pay particularly close attention. And peace be to you. It is Christ and Christ only who can bring peace. Now peace is something we all want. We all long for it. But the truth is that we are so often looking for it in the wrong place. Or rather, we are so often looking for what we think is peace. And so we look for it in the wrong place. For if it is no conflict, if it, if it is no suffering, no fears, no strife, no abandonment, no hurt. If it is a lack of all these things that you define as peace and that you are looking for in this life, then you are not looking for true peace. This is clear, Christ says, peace be to you. And then to his apostles, he shows his wounds. He shows his wounds, the evidence of conflict, the evidence of suffering, of strife, of abandonment and of hurt. He shows his wounds as if to say, if peace is what you want, then you must want this also. And so that is the first thing. We search for peace, but the peace we are searching for is not true peace at all. It is a fool's peace. But secondly, we seek peace in the wrong place. So often we look for peace in the world as if the world can give us true peace. As if the world can remove our anxieties, our conflicts, our pains and sufferings. But this is not something the world can give. Not at all. Only Christ can give you peace. Peace. If you look at the world, this is not what you will find. You will find wars, conflicts, famines, error, hatred, Godlessness. There is no peace in this world. If peace to you is a lack of all these things, a lack of conflict and suffering, etc. But even in our own lives, lives, how many different worries and stresses do we all have? Maybe you have no mass. Maybe you have infrequent sacraments. We are all living in a persecuted church. The dangers to the souls of our children and to ourselves, with sin and temptation pervading throughout society. Perhaps money issues, marriage issues, a lack of purpose and direction, scruples, loneliness, death, sickness, whatever it may be, the list will go on and on and on. There are so many things we point to and say, if that did not exist, I would have peace, finally. Life would be peaceful with this and without that. And yet, we know it not to be so. Because unless you seek peace in Christ, unless you seek only the peace that God can give, then you will always remain on the search for it. But will never find true peace. Christ himself tells us this elsewhere in the gospel when he says peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth do I give unto you it's so clear Christ himself tells us the peace the world offers is not true peace it is not my peace and it has no part with the true peace of God 
This peace can be found only in those who are one with Christ and keep his commandments. True peace is found only in those who are truly transformed by Christ and by his grace. So transformed that his will is God's will. So transformed that he lives no longer for himself but for Christ. So transformed that with St. Paul he can say he no longer lives but Christ liveth in him. Then and only then by this transformation will one experience true peace. And so a tranquil soul is a soul that is united to Christ, truly united to him. If you have money issues, if you're persecuted and alone, which in this life will undoubtedly happen at some point, but whatever it may be, imagine this cross no longer exists. It's now gone. And yet if you're not united to Christ and if you do not obey his commandments, if you're not of the life of grace in your soul, then the peace you feel at the lifting of this cross is but a facade. It is a peace only of the world. And experience will show that it lasts but a moment. However, if you're united to Christ, if you're resigned to his will, then you can have peace even with all these sorrows and sufferings. In the midst of them all. The imitation of Christ reads, Peace is what we all desire, but all care not for those things which appertain to peace. He who knows how to suffer will enjoy much peace. Such a one is a conqueror of himself and lord of the world, a friend of Christ and an heir of heaven. End quote. All care not for those things which appertain to peace. Yes, too often we want peace. We want peace that coincides with our sin. We want peace that coincides with our disobedience. We want peace that coincides with our self-love. We want peace that coincides with the world. But these things do not appertain to peace. Satan is conniving and he's deceitful. And one of his greatest deceptions is to make the anxious and the suffering and the lonely feel that peace can be found in self-seeking and pleasure. Maybe by a drink of alcohol. Maybe by some entertainment. Maybe by sports. But inevitably Satan will lead you to indulge in sin as the apparent escape from your torments, from your lack of peace. But anyone who has ever lived in sin will know that no such peace can be found there. Only slavery and misery. Just look at the history of the world. Has not every source of pleasure been sought to bring about peace? Has not every passion been satiated in the search of peace? And yet not one person has ever found peace in such things, for peace cannot be found in the world or in sin or in self-seeking. And even if, even if Satan is unable to lead you into sin, he gains a partial victory if he convinces you that peace will be found in the battle against suffering. To resist suffering, to resist your cross. This is what Satan will tell you will bring about peace, when in fact that is the very thing that will destroy the peace in your soul. To resist the will of God. Okay, so you are lonely. You do not get the sacraments often, you're calumnated. 
whatever it may be, but do not resist. Instead, resign yourself. Resign yourself to the will of God and accept the cross. Accept the spiritual crucifixion. You're deserving of it. And during these times of suffering and of sorrow, pray with the psalmist who said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why dost thou disquiet me? Hope thou in God, for I will still give praise to him, the salvation of my countenance and my God. True peace is found in the soul that reflects Christ, his purity, his love, his obedience and his suffering. And so we all know that life is hard. We all have different trials, different sufferings, different torments. And Christ also knows this. God sends him for your sanctification. So call out to him and ask him to help you accept all your crosses. This may mean doing something that alleviates the temporal suffering. This may mean taking steps that lifts the cross. This may be God's will for you to lift the cross. To remove it from you. This is a possibility. Sure. But it may not be God's will. It may not mean that you will earn more money or get a permanent priest, or have friends, or not be calumniated. It may not mean these things. God may not wish to lift the cross from you, and that is okay. Because long, as long as you are resigned to the will of God, as long as you have the life of grace in your soul, you will have Christ by your side. And with Christ by your side then peace will truly reign in your souls and the peace of eternal life will have no end. It will have no crosses. And so use today's gospel as a real opportunity to meditate upon the words of Christ. Peace be to you. And upon his words that we read elsewhere in the Gospels. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth do I give unto you. And consider what until this point you have considered peace to be. Have you considered it to be a closer union with Christ? An obedience of his commandments? And a resignation to his will? Have you considered peace to be a removal of your crosses? of your sufferings, of your torments. Consider also where you have sought peace in your life. You sought it in pleasure, in fleeting entertainments and in worldliness. Or have you sought it in Christ? For you will find no greater peace than amongst the martyrs, amidst their sufferings and calumnies and persecutions. Their souls were at peace in Christ. For this is a peace that the world cannot give. This is a peace you cannot find in the world. So stop searching for it there. It is a futile search. And a search which only Satan encourages. If you want peace, then you must search for Christ. For it is only in him that true peace is found. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.